please remember the views and opinions expressed by this show or any other show on DV Radio and its guests are strictly those of said individuals and do not reflect those of the DV Radio staff nor the staff of dysfunctional veterans. I'm Nevermore, and I'm not normally this pleasant sounding. I'm Frosty, and I'm just a frozen asshole. And that's right, you got DV Oink who loves to play and shit. I mean, no, <laughs> no, wait a minute, hold on. And they really didn't name your asshole one and two? That's what the boss calls it. <laughs> two people remember me and one folks mom. Oh, I'm not surprised. <laughs> we were a little bit soggy. Boiled bacon. <laughs> that's right. And I'd like to introduce DV Midnight Backdoor for all your backdoor needs. <laughs> you know what that means. We will talk really slow for you. Oh no, some of those nights at work. I say it's a different little bird. <laughs> <laughs> welcome to Frag Out, Drag Out. And welcome to Frag Out, Drag Out. I'm Uncle Fester. We have DD Oink with us. We have DD Midnight Frosty. And sitting in again this week, we have JJ PTS Dog. How is everyone doing today? Oink? Fantabulous. How about you, Frosty? Hanging in there. JJ, how are you, sir? I'm not too bad. Not too bad at all. So, we've heard about your projects, and we've seen your projects on your lathe. Uh-huh. Tell us what's on the lathe right now. A little uh, spalted maple box, but I finished a bowl this morning um, that I absolutely just adore. It's about ten and a half inches wide, about two and a half inches deep, not very deep, but it is spalted maple, highly spalted maple with uh, really, really bright figuring in it it's got flame in it it's got um an inclusion where a branch at one time was but rotted out it's just man sometimes sometimes i trip up and find a really beautiful piece of wood and make a really beautiful piece of art and this was one of them um i'm actually really really thrilled with this bowl because it's just gorgeous and I am donating it to a veteran nonprofit that gave me a grant to help me fix my front end of my truck at the beginning of this month. So uh, they wouldn't let me don't make any cash donations or do any, do a Facebook fundraiser or anything. They're like, no, we don't take private donations. And I'm like, well, can I, can I turn a bowl for you to, uh, uh, that you can auction to raise funds. And they're like, sure, we, we'll take that. So this bowl, this is one of the pieces that, that when I take it to the post office and mail it, it's going to hurt. I absolutely love this bowl. It is gorgeous. But that's what's going on on the lathe. And then uh, actually a little cut off of the same piece of maple. I'm working on a lidded box. I'll actually get two boxes out of that piece of wood. Um, so, you know. <sighs> COVID isolation ain't hurting me because it just means I spend more time on my lathe. <laughs> and there's nothing wrong with that. that Honing means... my skills. That's, you know what? That's what I'm doing. I'm just getting better at what I'm doing, you know? I can't complain about that. I'm having a blast doing it, too. Oink, anything new going on this week with you? Ah, hell no. Frosty decided to abandon my ass at work, so I'm stuck there with the newbies and, you know... With this COVID shit going on, there you know the guards not playing, and you know they're not doing the training missions, so we're not doing a whole hell of a lot there at work, um, which is kind of weird because you figure I know we're weather mission essential, uh, but the guys that are actually plow the runway to keep those things open, they're sitting at home right now because we're not getting any snow. Well, so. in in Frosty's defense, he sent me a picture of the street in front of his house. <laughs> well, this is true. I did see that same one. It's so. freaking flooding. <laughs> like, there's a river running down the street right now. Yeah, so, it's maybe you just didn't want to limber up the kayak and paddle yeah. out. <laughs> <laughs> it is the beginning of what we call breakup season here in Alaska, and it's kind of one of those you know freeze thaw cycles. So, yeah, it, it loves to thaw in the morning, and by the time I get ready to go to work, it's just starting to refreeze and roads become fun again you know the mud puddles add that little thin crust of ice over the top you get to splash through so yeah yeah, it's a typical type of year that you know it's good good to have that you know monthly car uh car wash pass if you can get one of those because it it definitely pays off in the end yeah that that puddle it was by the time that they finally got the drain open for it it was probably close to about a foot deep nice taking up half the street or almost well the whole street there but halfway up the hill it seemed like 
Yeah. If you didn't it have was a perfect one for driving through. If you don't have a jacked up vehicle, you're screwed if you drive through that. <laughs> oh, I was laughing watching the cars go through. It's like, do I go fast or do I go slow? <laughs> <laughs> Doesn't yeah. matter. You're going to flood out your engine and ruin shit either way. <laughs> <laughs> you say, I, my last night going into work, I found a couple that uh, even with my truck, I was a little concerned about. <laughs> yep. Yep. Gotta love that uh, breakup weather. Man, I can remember breakup. <laughs> Mud puddles six feet deep, it seemed like, man. Oh, yeah. If you don't find that, you find the potholes that are hidden by the water. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. The snow and ice <laughs> back and full. It's been nice and smooth all winter, and now it's thawing out. <laughs> oh, great story with that one. I had a friend a few years back that I get this phone call and say, can you help? My car's not running right. And I'm like, okay, where are you at? And I, so I went over to rescue her and I'm like, well, what'd you do? It's like, I went through this puddle about four times. I'm looking at this puddle and going, holy cow, you made it four times through that puddle? <laughs> she basically waterboarded her car, pulled out, her, <laughs> pulled out the air filter, and it was so saturated, it, the engine was getting no air at all. Nice. <laughs> Luckily, there was a shop just across the parking lot that had one and a new filter, put it in there. It's like, okay, avoid that puddle. You can hit the small ones, just avoid the big ones. Yep. Don't drive through the lakes in the road. Well, it's a design flaw with the, uh, at least what I'd consider a design flaw for up here with the, uh, I think it's the uh, Ford Excursions. Mm -hmm. The intake is right behind or right in front of the front driver's side wheel. Oh, nice. So basically, if you go through one of those puddles, you're throwing water right up into your air intake. Right. <laughs> yeah. Hey, uh, engineers doesn't have to fix the shit. They just got to make it work, right? Yeah, just put a circle <laughs> on it. You'd be fine. There you go. <laughs> just put a snorkel on it. That's all you got to do. Well, Nevermore is uh, down. She's been working her butt off. She's been determined to be essential personnel. She worked 10 day days in a row. They made her take Sunday off because she was dead on her feet. She worked yesterday. She's still trying to recover. She's got to go back for another 8 or 10 days tomorrow. So um, we're trying to trying to settle into a routine kids kids out of school at least until June or until May entire month of April has now been canceled and yeah, uh, same up here. So we're, uh, and quite frankly, I'm looking at gathering some materials and building some planters, do some square foot gardening. Cause at this rate, it's, you know what folks plant your victory gardens, call the, them uh, gardens if you want to, but better start growing some stuff. Uh, that list I sent you, would you like any of that stuff? Uh, yeah, I'll, I'll get with you later. Um, I got to, I got to source some, uh, materials first, get the boxes built. But, uh, folks, look, this does not look like it's going to let up anytime soon. <sighs> so don't panic. Start planning. It's not hard to plant a garden. All you have to do is learn to read. And follow the directions. You know, water, your, water your plants. Yeah, there's a ton. Have you ever looked at Kindle and looked for looked through the free books? There, I swear, there's 150 free gardening books on Kindle. I swear to God, there's at least 150, maybe more. Uh, there's just, I mean, if you don't know what you're doing. It's not like you don't have the time to learn. Yeah, I mean, exactly. <laughs> well, I can tell you this. If you plant corn, get you some, like, blank CDs or whatever and hang them on the plants to scare away the uh, squirrels. I grew corn one year. Every ear of corn, the squirrels ate out of the husk. And I went to go pick it, and I pulled it back, and it was empty. And I was like, oh, my. What the heck? I finally just mowed it all down with my riding mower. I was like, hey, if I can't have it, they can't have it. <laughs> well, the other thing you can do is uh, get a pellet gun. Unless you're in city limits, be careful about that. But, you know, uh, squirrels good eating. Squirrel pelts make nice banana hammocks. Keep your, your uh, under, under nether regions warm in the winter. <laughs> um, no, I don't. I mean, if things aren't so bad, we're going to be eating squirrels, at least not anytime soon. But um, I'm not like, sure into that. I like Frosty's answer the other day that 
little meme he posted about uh, catching a squirrel to wipe with. Uh-huh. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, but uh, there's plenty of uh, there's plenty of um, there's plenty of methods to keep squirrels out of your garden. Um, there's plenty of methods to take advantage of squirrels in your garden, if if you so desire. Um, and well, uh, the cucumbers, if you're interested, um, the, if you're going to use it for pickling, I have a Boston pickling uh, cucumbers that grow like monsters. Yep. They'll take oh. over a garden. And you can grow potatoes and straw bales. Get three or four straw bales, stand them on in, cut down. It's a little bit of a pain in the butt to kind of hollow out in the middle, but you put your uh, topsoil in there, plant a couple potatoes in there, and you make sure you go down at least two-thirds away in the straw bale. And uh, uh, as the uh, plant matures and potatoes start getting ready, all you do is just, uh, when you want potatoes, go out and pull away the first, you know, the top layer of the straw bale, and there's a top layer. There's a layer of potatoes. That way, you're not digging up the whole plant, and the rest keep growing. Um, straw straw bale gardening is uh, there's books on that in Kindle, um, and on in Amazon, and uh, I mean, there's look. We have essentially all the knowledge on the planet ever available to us. A lot of it free on the internet right now, and and nobody has anything else to do. You know, it's not like you don't have time to go plant yourself a garden. Do a little, do a little uh, pre-planning. Do a little and, uh, research, and, and we're all going to be just fine as long as we stop fucking panicking. That is the first thing: is no panicking. Um, I think th- the, the biggest kind of panic people have right now is those that are without the jobs, you know, without that mm-hmm. income coming in. You know what exactly are they going to do? So I mean, I, I can see the sense of panic in those folks that uh, well, the, that the unknown is there for them because you well, know, how here, they're going to pay their bills here in North Carolina um, because it's a state of emergency. They've opened up the uh, uh, unemployment to anybody that's out of work. They can collect unemployment without having to wait due to this emergency. Well, but there's you know what. You got a car that's that's uh, uh, halfway reliable. Right now, everybody's doing everything by delivery. Groceries by delivery, um, food, restaurants delivery, Do- uh, DoorDash, um, uh, Uber, Uber, uh, DoorDash, Dine It. Uh, d- there's, I, of course, I can't name them. But there's a whole bunch. There's a grocery delivery service where you get on their webpage and you tell them what you need from what store. They send a driver there who does the shopping. You know, you pay the service. The service puts the money on the driver's card. The driver pays, brings it, delivers it to your house. This stuff is, if you're in, especially if you're in cities, this stuff is thriving right now. Go get a delivery job. Go to the nearest city. And uh, what is the, the grocery service one? Man, I can't remember. But right now, everybody's needs delivery drivers right now. Everybody's looking for delivery drivers. If you really need to make some money and keep, you know, if it's if it's a matter of life and death keeping the food on the table, go go do the delivery job for a couple of weeks or a couple of months or whatever whatever it takes, you know? Um, there's there's stuff available. Things are not most industries are not closing down. It's things where people are up close. Dining in restaurants. They're shutting down tattoo parlors. Um, nail salons, hair salons, all sorts of salons. Barber shops, nail salons, massage. Stuff where there's physical contact. And so, yes, those people are impacted, but there are other options available. There are things out there for you. And there are programs. Most of the states have programs for assistance because... The states are determining what's shut down due to the emergency. And so, um, you know, as much as I am against socialism, those socialist programs are in existence. They They are available and they are working very hard to make sure that people who are being negatively impacted by this, um, are able to survive. 
So, man, for those that are looking for a job, at least here in North Carolina, the UPS stores are still currently open because they've been deemed an an essential necessity to ship. Yeah. My, uh, I had a friend visiting last week uh, from Washington state and Washington state um, FedEx actually suspended deliveries in Washington state. And I'm sitting here going, man, that's a, especially big cities like Seattle. I mean, Amazon uh, uses FedEx and UPS. And if if, if FedEx is going to lose a lot of money by shutting down shipping and uh, delivery services in the state of Washington, um, that doesn't make a lot of sense to me. Is there, if their reason is because they're protecting their workers, how much physical contact do the, do the employees make with their customers? Oh, well, that's true. The delivery drivers uh, are like the original uh, ring and run people. Yeah. I mean, they drop it on your front porch and leave. There's no shaking hands and so, what some things you have, unless you have to sign for it. But that's not the kind of stuff people are ordering right now. So it doesn't make a lot of sense to shut off delivery service. I'm sure FedEx had a good reason, but that's a dumb, that's a dumb idea. That's a really dumb idea. Yeah, because most medications, uh, like government medications, they don't normally come UPS and uh, if not post office, you know, one of the delivery services. I don't know. Yeah. VA uses post office here. Well, I think probably the, the, the reasoning for that in Washington State is Washington State just did an entire statewide hunker down, stand down. Yeah. So I do know a few people in Washington that have family down there and some work for FedEx, but I haven't heard any, hadn't heard that one yet. Yeah. That's what he was telling me. He was, uh, we sent him home early. We sent him home yesterday morning, uh, Monday morning, because uh, he was supposed to say to what stay till Wednesday, but the governor's let it be known that shelter and order uh, order for shelter in place order for North Carolina kicks into effect tomorrow morning, Wednesday morning. So yeah, I think um, Washington's went into effect yesterday, and yeah, yeah. Up up here for anybody coming into the state, it's a fourteen day mandatory quarantine. Nice. So it's basically you fill out a little form at the airport saying where you're going to be quarantined the next forty days. You go right there, and you're supposed to be there for those fourteen days. Mm, fun. And they may or may not check on you, but it's a was it twenty five thousand dollar fine and or one year in jail. If you're caught outside Simple of that house arrest without due process, pretty much three huts and a cut. You really want to worry about what's going on with this, this whole situation. Worry about the trampling of our civil rights, because guess what? They're being hammered right now. Do that. Does that mean, you know, we all need to suit up and go boogaloo? No, but I think that these things, that quarantine should be voluntary not mandatory anybody unless you're sick you know unless unless you're you're sick sick. yeah i mean if you're sick that's different but if you're sick they should be hospitalizing you in italy from what i understand uh the elderly that went to the hospital with it were sent home because they said there was nothing they could do for them and that's why italy has such a high death rate Mm -hmm. which in and of itself is uh kind of criminal Kind of criminal. Uh, I know at least around Charlotte, according to the latest map, the highest affected areas are people that have lots and lots of money. Mm-hmm. Valentine, Dilworth area, just people that are people well off. Travel? People that travel that don't listen to, you know, don't go to the store. Some lady went to Lowe's and got a cart full of uh, gardening supplies, and uh, you know, I, I can understand needing to get stuff, but um, just browsing a store for no good reason, mm-hmm. it's just crazy. Well, I can see getting gardening stuff, but then you look at some of those, uh, you know, retarded spring breakers that are down here in Florida right now, the millennials and oh I mean, not the millennials, just the younger generation are down there still parting it up and saying, you know, whatever, man. Well, and, and quite frankly, the, this whole uh, movement where there are certain people, mainly millennials, calling this 
virus, the boomer remover. <sighs> you know, I hate to tell you, kids, but those boomers are the reason you have the country you have. They're the reason that you have the economy you have. And the disrespect with which the two generations seems to be treating each other um, is disgusting. It, it really is. Uh, and there's no reason for it. You should not be cheering on the deaths of anybody at the, at the hands of this virus. Um, you should be focusing on making sure that your elderly neighbors are being taken care of, that they've got everything they need. And if they don't, if you can help them, Go do so. Go, you know, hey, rather than you putting yourself at risk by going to Walmart today, give me your shopping list. I'll go, I'll go see what I can get for you. That, you know, this is, this is an opportunity for us to come together as people and as communities instead of being dicks. That's just my two cents on it is don't be fucking dicks. When I used to work at the retirement center and I worked there for 14 years, I, it was unbelievable how many children dropped their parents there and did not want to hear from us unless it was to collect a dead body. And that was the hardest part of my job, knowing that their children didn't care whether or not they lived or died. But if they died, that's when they wouldn't be notified. Yeah. And because, you know, our standard procedure was if someone went to the hospital, we let the family know. And I called someone and, you know, hey, you know, just want to let you know your family member went to the hospital for da-da-da-da-da. Are they dead? Uh, no, they're at the hospital. Oh, don't call us unless they're dead. Hmm. And they hung up on me, and I was like, oh, my God. Who can treat parents like that? It's just sad. This This new generation of kids is just unbelievable. They don't care about who brought them up. Well, you know what? It's the parents' fault. What you put the time and, and effort you invest in your children is what pays back when you get old. You know? Yep, sitting in front of the Xbox or in front of uh, Netflix and, and expecting that to, to raise your child, uh, you know, and you have no communication with them. This is what you get, you know? Mm -hmm. The electronic babysitter and. Unfortunately, that's why kids think they can go out and shoot somebody and they'll just respawn. Yeah. Doesn't work that way. Doesn't work that way. So funny trend I'm seeing is people going out with their kids because, you know, everybody's stuck at home and they're, and they're uh, writing in the driveway and they're writing things like dead inside. And, you know, they're, they're pretending it's the zombie apocalypse and they're writing shit that they saw in The Walking Dead on their, on their driveways. <laughs> oh, I thought that's great. That quality family time right there. <laughs> yeah, right? Okay, kids, let's go freak the neighbors out. <laughs> this is not a zombie virus, folks. It's not, but it's funny because that's the first thing people jump to is, hey, what if this is zombies, you know? Uh, well, they don't have to worry about the zombies, you know, devil tapping the brain because most of those are brain dead anyway. Well, I was going to say, although there's no such thing as zombies, we're certainly dealing with a lot of brain dead idiots right now. <laughs> oh, my God. Let me tell you. And people, I would be remiss if I did not remind you, and I'm doing this on my show, I'm doing this on my page, don't fucking spray Lysol or Clorox or any of those... Uh, um, disinfectant sprays, don't spray them on your dogs. That shit is poisonous. You will poison your dog. It can burn their skin and it can kill them. Do not spray your dogs, cats, gophers, gerbils, whatever. Don't spray them with that shit. It's not safe, okay? Uh, soap and water kills the virus. If you really think that your dog was, you know, like somebody who was infected, Pat your dog, and you're you're worried about your dog's fur carrying the virus. Put the dog in the tub, soap them up, regular dog shampoo. You can even use K-Bar Soap Co's Ricky Recon. That is what I use on my dogs. It is just soap. No dyes, no scents, no nothing. Just pure lye soap, okay? And wash them with soap or dog shampoo. Don't poison your dog because you're scared of a fucking virus. 
It does. And don't, don't, don't go dumping them off at a local pound and stuff too, because they can. The, they got yes. the virus because they don't. They they can't no. get this strain. It's a human strain of virus. So yes, your dog cannot catch the coronavirus. It could be. We, what we don't know is we know that the virus. They're saying it's, it lives up to three days on plastic surfaces. Uh, lives about a day, a day or two on steel. It can be transmitted on fabric which your dog's fur is most comparable to, and it lasts about six to eight hours before it dies off on fabric. So, yes, if somebody who has coronavirus sneezes on your dog, has it on their hands and pets your dog, yes, it could be on their coat, but the dog does not have the virus. It's just being transmitted on their coat. So if you're afraid that that has happened, just bathe the dog normally. There are dog-friendly wipes, not dude wipes, not... Not, you know, don't use hand wipes. Those aren't dog friendly. There are dog friendly wipes you can buy. Um, but, you know, the only dogs that should be out in public right now anyway, except for like going for walks and stuff, is service dogs. And this is yet another uh, great reason for service dog handlers not to let people touch their animals. So just say. In fact, I had a guy ask me if I wasn't letting people pet Skeeter because of the coronavirus. And I said, no, I don't let people pet him because he's working because he's a service dog. But the coronavirus is another reason for you to get the fuck away from me. So, you know, but don't poison your dogs over this shit, please. And don't go dump them off. Your dog can't catch the virus. Why do we have to say these things? Honestly, this <laughs> is a great opportunity right now to start taking warning labels off of everything. Maybe we need a die off. Maybe, maybe... Oh. Go Darwin. Go yeah, Darwin. That's what I'm saying. Maybe the American population has gotten so stultifyingly stupid that, you know what? This is a good idea. Let the dumb ones take care of themselves. <laughs> and unfortunately, when they pass away, we'll find, you know, 50 rolls of toilet paper hidden in, in there. Their, right? Yeah. <laughs> that's you. what I'm saying. You know, have the coroner's office go in or the police and they, you know, they, they take the body and then confiscate their toilet paper and distribute it to the elderly. Good grief, people. For fuck's fucking sake, calm the fuck down. The Have you seen these people still taking... has it up. The flu is still deadlier than coronavirus. Have you seen these people going into like restaurants that have these or restrooms that have these big, huge toilet paper rolls with a drill <laughs> sealing, sealing toilet paper that I way? I saw that. That was hilarious. You know what's sad is that fuck Planned Parenthood has killed more people than the coronavirus right now. So yeah, yeah this uh, this whole quarantine has lo lowered the death rate in Chicago. Right, and that's <laughs> not that's actually true. Yes, it is. That is actually the truth. <laughs> Less people are being shot to death in Chicago right now uh, because they're all hiding from this virus. But as soon as the quarantine's lifted, guess what? Bang bang, motherfucker. <laughs> kind of reminds me of that uh, game on <laughs> yep, exactly we have to take a quick break uh when we get back oink's going to talk to us about our uh wonderful sponsors and um we'll see if any of those have a frag out i ain't gonna frag out this i'm not you know there, yeah we got plenty to frag out about actually maybe we do have a frag out maybe we talk about what the fuck those idiots in congress are doing because it ain't good We'll be right back after this. You're listening to Frag Out, Drag Out right here on DV Radio, WDVR. DV Radio. What's DV Radio? DV Radio is for you, the veteran, active duty service member, caregiver, and civilian supporter of the military. DVRadio.net is the online veteran network made for and by veterans. From original shows to syndication, you can find it here on DVRadio.net. In an effort to continue our mission and make better quality shows for each and every one of you, visit our Patreon at patreon.com forward slash DV Radio. Whether you can only pledge $1 per month or that entire million dollar inheritance your uncle left you, there's a tier with rewards waiting for you. So why not keep DV Radio running and get rewarded at the same time? Head to patreon.com forward slash DV Radio now. That's patreon.com forward slash DV Radio. Radio. 
On February 5th, the Department of Transportation published a set of proposed rule changes for air travel with service dogs in the Federal Register. This 94-page document is complex, but could have an adverse effect on the lives of every disabled handler of a task-trained service dog, as well as the disabled owners of emotional support animals. The future of equal rights for disabled people as we know it could be jeopardized by some of these proposed rule changes. As stakeholders, it is in the best interest of all disabled people to register their comments on this NPRM before the deadline of April 6, 2020. Please go to the regulations.gov website, search for the notice titled Traveling by Air with Service Animals, and click on the Comment Now link in the upper right corner to make your voice heard. Remember to be polite and professional so that your comment will be registered. Together, we can ensure that the voices of disabled handlers of task-trained service dogs are heard. Radio. Shooters Express is Charlotte's number one destination for all personal defense, sport, instruction, and recreational shooting supplies. They offer concealed carry classes for only $29.95. That's only $29.95 for concealed carry classes. And if you're military or law enforcement, you'll receive great deals and be eligible for even more at Shooters Express. So head over to Shooters Express in Belmont, North Carolina, or visit ShootersExpress.com for more information and monthly deals. That's Shooters Express in Belmont, North Carolina. This is not a paid endorsement from Shooters Express, and is provided solely by the radio free of charge. Let's get it on. We get some food red, baby, for you! The music. Let's go! You're listening to WGDR on DVRadio.net. Five veterans... For veterans. Simply made for you. And welcome back to Frag Out, Drag Out. This is Uncle Fester. We still have DV Oink, DV Midnight Frosty, our special guest host, PTS Dog, JJ. Welcome back, everyone. Howdy. Woohoo! We're back. Hey, Oink, sponsorship us. Sponsorship away. Hey, there are plenty of non-organic options out there with additional and unnecessary chemicals, but not many natural options available. The K-Bar Soap Company will offer soaps that will be presented in the shape of a grenade and have scents that are active, rough living men will naturally gravitate to. This will be an all-natural code process soap made in small batches to keep superior quality standard. Scents like Whiskey and Bad Decisions, Firewatch, Chest Candy, and Salt Dog will be available with different cleansings properties. So if you haven't had the time to get over there and check them out, do us all a favor, ditch the bar and grab a grenade. And also, if you have not heard of our new sponsor for DB Radio, Zapsplat. Zapsplat is a sound effects library for those on a budget. Hundreds of effects plus royalty-free music any creator can use in their production. They're on DB Radio's newest sponsor, and you can hear a promo for Zapsplat made entirely with effects and music from the Barracks Talk episode, we have a Lamborghini. For more information, click on the banner at the top of dvradio.net or head over to zapsplat.com for your reasonably priced effects and royalty-free music now. Check those guys out as well. You almost made it through that okay there. Almost, you know, but eat, but eat, but eat. God damn it, Porky, you fucking bastard. Yeah, we're related. (laughs) (laughs) That boy messed that shit up. <laughs> oh, Frosty, you're on vacation? Yeah, this was actually pre-planned back in start of the year. I was going to take a week off just to kind of chill out, kind of get away from what we like to call March Madness around here, mm-hmm. where everybody's getting on their nerves. So I scheduled it out, and just as hit, hit my vacation hit just as all the rest of this bullshit started going on. Right, so you were already planning to shelter in place even though you didn't know you needed to shelter in place. Well, I was planning on working on a few projects around the house, but now that's most of those. It's, well, what do I already have materials for or already have in place? Because it's kind of a pain to go out right now. Yeah, well, you know. <laughs> well, we know that what you really did was you'd, you'd reached the end of Pornhub, and so you wanted to spend a week with the latest upload so that you could catch back up. So Something like that, yeah. <laughs> Got to, got to try out some of those other sites once in a while, too. Ah, uh, X Hamster. <laughs> oh, no, no, no. That one's, all, that one's all hack now. You don't want to go there. Lemon party. <laughs> oh, God. Not that I frequent any of those sites. Ah, uh-huh, right, Fester. <laughs> <laughs> 
Well, I gotta, I gotta find a use for that fifty-five gallon drum of lube. I want. Oh no, not the fifty-five gallon drum of lube. Oh, how did I know that would find its way back on the, into the lexicon on DB Radio? Well, you know, I I started listening to uh, Simon and Garfunkel slip sliding away, and I was yep, like, yep, yep. need to order it. <laughs> oh man, uh, Oink, here's a question. How's homeschooling going? Awesome. The wife loves every minute of it because <laughs> this guy is not fucking doing it. <laughs> I've already taught him all the bad cuss words. I've already taught him how to get the prostitutes in GTA 5. So, uh... <laughs> Rose the wife under the bus. <laughs> <laughs> that now, she's, she's going about bad shit crazy because, you know, the, the week that they have off for, for spring break, you know, usually – do a little bit of planning with the grandparents, you know, and we'll go catch a matinee movie or something with the little guy and, you know, kind of take that week and just do different things with them. But uh, when that week turns into two, that turns into now a month and it's starting to stretching into have, three. Yeah, if, she, if she didn't have gray hair, she's getting it now for sure. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, the question is, is after all this uh, social distancing is over and you know everyone's trapped in their houses with their spouses, how high will the murder rate go? How high will the, the you know the pregnancies go? Uh, I was going to say you know, nine, nine months. months. <laughs> One of the funniest memes I've seen uh, is you know uh, I think Marquis posted it. Uh, I don't I, I don't want to be seeing kids named K Rona in nine months. <laughs> well, the funny thing is, I know of at least four people four that are uh, already pregnant. <laughs> just before all this kicked off <laughs> and they're going to be they're going to be stuck being called corona babies exactly <laughs> no they'll be at the the leading edge of the corona kids yeah right the corona the corona we got we got the uh we got the gen xers we got the gen y we got the millennials we got the gen z and we got the corona babies <laughs> <laughs> uh, 30 years me how does it feel to be from a generation that's named after a disease <laughs> Named after a light beer. <laughs> a light beer that caused a disease, because you know the press is going to go that way. Dude, people, listen. Corona beer does not fucking cause the coronavirus. Go buy a Mexican beer, you assholes. Holy shit. I'm just hoping the price will drop so I can afford multiple cases at once. Honestly, I have intentionally only been drinking Corona since this all started because people are actually that stupid that they aren't buying Corona beer. And I'm like, uh, so I went to the Walmart, right? And I got a, I got a 12 pack of Corona Familiar and I put it right in the front of my cart and I'm wheeling through Walmart bold as day with, with a kid, you know, with a 12 pack of Corona, right? If you're going to see it's Corona, nobody messed with me. Like they saw my cart. And moved. I'm not joking. Well, you I remember the- it was, they're that fucking stupid. Yep. You remember the brown jug, right? The little liquor stores. Yeah. Up there oh, yeah. yeah. Well, the ones up there in Fairbanks was actually, if you were to buy a 12 pack of Corona bottles, they gave you a free roll of toilet paper. Hey, that's, <laughs> that's, a, now that's promotion. That's, that's, that's some business savvy. That right is creative there. marketing right there, boys. <laughs> There's actually a pizza place somewhere up north that with uh, a $20 purchase, you get two rolls of toilet paper. Nice. <laughs> nice. You know, that was a Taco Bell, was it? <laughs> well, as a matter of fact, <laughs> no, but I, I, I have started an experiment of my own three day old Taco Bell. Oh, Let's see what it does to the body. Oh, God. <laughs> I've been there, thing. done that. It's uh, a good thing you're a fireman because you're probably going to need a hose. <laughs> oh, no shit. <laughs> Literally. We had to oh. go there. <laughs> Wasn't me this week. Why, yeah, oh, no, why hey, is it that we hey. always end up talking about Pope? <laughs> hey, it sells, you know. <laughs> What else? Do, what else do we know about? Really, seriously, <laughs> we're a bunch of shitheads. So <laughs> this is a shitty situation. It is it's, a shitty. Yeah, uh, you know the shit has hit the fan. <laughs> you know, we, we might as well, you know, enjoy what we know about. You know, and you know, it, it brings smiles to other people's faces. Right. Yeah. You mentioned Corona. I'm just not a fan of Corona, so I went in and picked up some uh, good old Alaska Amber up here. Oh, yeah. there, was one, there was one next to it, though, that I – people have said it's good. I just – I can't bring myself to buy it. It's from the same brewery. It's the Husky IPA. Well, I haven't tried it yet. It just 
just the name of it makes me nervous. When you're talking about a beer and a Husky and IP, I mean, it's just, <laughs> <laughs> I don't care well, if there's an A in there or not. It just makes me well, nervous. That was Canadian. Like that. That's the Canadian part. IPA. Oh, yeah. Oh, it's a Canadian <laughs> beer. <laughs> yeah, it's the problem with that one is, you know, you drink it and you end up, you know, you can only rent beer for so long. So <laughs> <laughs> you don't buy beer, you rent it. <laughs> yes, I have to like remember to, that one. Yes, I'd like to return this beer. It's stunk. <laughs> <laughs> Tasted good, but man, it, it just runs through you fast. Oh, I was going to say IP all over because you know if the huskies are anything like my malamute they mark everywhere <laughs> ipa see, see that's why i'm afraid to drink that one who knows what's in that bottle <laughs> especially uh, up here it's full of dog urine <laughs> well it can't yes be. yes alaska brewery we on frag out drag out are starting the rumor that your husky ipa is actually recycled dog urine you can sue us <laughs> We'll give you a dollar. <laughs> I can't, I can't, That's I can't all we got. <laughs> we'll give you all the profits that we make off of this show. <laughs> <laughs> hey, but that may be a way to get sponsorship for DB Radio because it costs us. <laughs> I like that idea. That's what we need to do is we need to, we need to tell Bo, hey, Bo, look, get people to sue us. And we'll give them the profits we make. Since we're upside down, they'll have to pay us. And that'll fund DV Radio. There we go. Perfect. Oh, man. Only if we'd work that way, right? That would be hilarious. <laughs> you got to pay us. Well, since we're in the, since we're in the red. Um... <laughs> Will you cover our bills, please? Yep. <laughs> I'll gladly pay you Tuesday for a hamburger today. Oh, hamburgers. Oh man, that reminds me. I didn't thaw anything out for dinner. Leftovers. <laughs> Woohoo! Yeah. Are they leftovers or left unders? Um, well, they're kind of left in the fridge, so <laughs> make your choice. <laughs> well, I either have left unders or left next twos. Ah, I guess. I never have leftovers, so I always eat those first. Yeah. Well, because they're <laughs> on top, so they're the easy. Exactly. Easy. You gotta get them out of the way. Yeah. <laughs> So, Link, have you thought about having, or Frosty, um, that special beer that's made with Mo Rocky Mountain Oysters yet? Have you thought about trying that? What are you talking about? Have you not heard about the beer that has that's made with Rocky Mountain Oysters? No. Uh, no. No. I've, I've had uh, Rocky Mountain Oysters. Wait a minute. I know something about the brewing process and putting that much protein into the mash would cause the... That would fuck up the, the actual um, fermentation uh, process. Yeah, fermentation. How are they? What? You got to send me links to this. I got to read about this. I'll have to, I'll, I'll, I'll find the brewery and send it to you. Yeah, send but, me yeah, links. There, there's a uh, brewery that's specializing, specializing in Rocky Mountain oyster beer. Hmm. Interesting. Interesting. I've heard of it, yeah. I always. I had it as a kid. I had a, uh, my uh, brother-in-law, he was a chef at a local restaurant and they'd have a wild game, you know, night where they'd have, you know, different things come in duck and, you know, just different stuff that normal, I, I guess you could say in the Midwest, it, it, it didn't eat all the time. And of course he sits me down, he puts these Rocky Mountain noise. I knew what the fuck they were. I mean, they're not stuffed fucking mushrooms for crying out loud. Right? So yeah. <laughs> he's like, so oh, I'm Gonna try it. I'm like, yeah, I'll try it. I'll try anything once, twice if I like it. I mean, uh, <laughs> so. <laughs> so what but you're yeah. hearing, folks, is Oink likes balls in his mouth. I do. They're so <laughs> salty. <laughs> oh, I had. I'll tell you, man. Wild game. <clears throat> there used to be a restaurant. I don't know if they're still in existence, but there was a restaurant in Manitou Springs, Colorado, that. Uh, and of course, I can't remember the name of it, but they specialized in wild game. And oh, they had some incredible dishes. But Delmonico's in, uh, is it Phoenix? I think it's Phoenix, Arizona. It's a, it's a, Frank Sinatra used to hang out, literally, Frank Sinatra hung out at this restaurant in, in, in Phoenix. Nice. And um, we went down for the uh, Super Bowl because I was at North, North Come and we did the, uh, we were the color guard for the Super Bowl, uh, 42. And uh, it, we, uh, the gunny, who was the Marine 
because it was a all services color guard. The gunny who was the Marine for the color guard, uh, his brother-in-law was a chef at Delmonico's. So we got dinner for 50 bucks each special, the whole restaurant to ourselves, just the color guard went to Delmonico's and we had our own dinner and we had wild boar, um, tomahawks steaks. Let me tell you what, that was incredible. All oh, that was some good eating. Wild boar is darn good if it's cooked right. I think yeah, was- I mean, I've had people complain or heard of people complaining about eating bear. And I mean, I've, I haven't tasted at least the two guys that I've tried the, you know, their bear roast and different stuff. I mm-hmm. still haven't had one that's been bad. So I don't yeah, know everybody, where that's coming heard- from. Yeah, I've always heard people saying, oh, bear's greasy. I've never, I've never had the opportunity. One, the one wild game that I never had the opportunity to eat in Alaska is bear. And I've, I've, always, I've always heard people complain about it, and then I've always heard people say, look, if you cook it right, it's amazing. Yep. Make chili with it. Make uh, sausage out of it. You know, make dishes that are traditionally a little bit greasy. And it's fine. The, the biggest complaint I've ever heard about bear meat is it's greasy. And I'm like, well, think about what bears do all year. Oh, yeah. No kidding. They get fat so that they can hibernate during the winter. So I think the know. strangest thing I've ever eaten was ostrich jerky. Hmm. Mm. I'm trying to think what's the weirdest thing. Well, I mean, I've had seafood in Thailand. <laughs> at, a thai rest- at a Thai restaurant. At a thai restaurant. Is and that thai- what you're calling it? <laughs> no, no, no. It was actually seafood, but it was it was a Thai restaurant that was on the the dock on the pier. Like so, the, it wasn't. It couldn't be fresher. And I think there was some sea anemone in there. Um, <laughs> there's some, you know, squid, uh, octopus, and um, oh, God only knows what kind of fish, prawns, yep. and, you know. Yeah. Um, I've had eel. Eel's kind of weird. Uh, they're, I know they're slimy as hell when you catch them. Well, I've had I've had it in sushi, so I've had. Uh, uh, but but the Japanese actually cook the eel it, or process it in some way so it has a smoky flavor. It's not raw. Um, and, and when they put it in sashimi, and it, but it's actually it's good. It's it's just odd. Um, different texture. That's the thing yeah. is, if you, if you don't do textures, don't go eat raw fish. Yeah, don't don't go to Japan. That's for yeah. sure. Oh, I had, uh, and raw I had good, good sashimi in Japan. Oh, oh yes. Oh yes. man. I think the worst thing I had in Japan. Well, there's two things. One was, you know, I think it was raw octopus because all I did was sit there and chew on it like it was a fucking good, you know, Goodyear tire. Like bubble about, gum, yeah. Yeah, for about 20 minutes, and finally I just had to spit the shit out. And then, I mean, it wasn't. I mean, I was half drunk, so I couldn't really taste it. Uh, but <laughs> then there was one night I was totally drunk. And we had one of our Japanese neighbors come over to my buddy's house, and he brought something in a can, and I couldn't tell what the hell it was. He cracks it open, and all, you could just a, a fish smell from hell. Oh. And it looked like it was round, like an eyeball type thing. And he gave it to the cat. The cat took off running the other direction. So, huh. of course, it's Japanese culture that you don't, if they bring something over to you, because we gave him like a six pack of Budweiser, which I guess <laughs> Japanese love Budweiser. So he yeah. was. So he was ecstatic with it. So later on that night, after we've been drinking the rest of the Budweiser and tequila and everything else, he comes knocking on the door and we're like, what's going on? Well, we invite him in. He comes in, he brings, you know, some food and it was something in a can that was round. And the, the, my wife and uh, his wife, Steve's wife would not eat it, of course. And I was like, well, I'm, just give me a shot of tequila to wash this thing right. down with and we'll be good to go. <laughs> It only only live once. That's well. right. <laughs> I'm trying to think of some weird shit I've eaten. I mean, I've eaten I've eaten ribs at the Chili's in Dubai in United Bear Rivers. That's not yeah. I know what you're talking about. And I don't think they were beef ribs, but I'm <laughs> they were really good. So I don't care if they weren't beef because it was delicious. <laughs> but it, but it was most likely camel. <laughs> yeah, you were two hump or one hump camel. <laughs> but it was good. It was. I, I'm not complaining. That was some damn good ribs. They were tender. They were juicy. Uh, I don't know. Let's see. I was gonna say for weird stuff for me, I got to try uh, muck tuck one time. That was interesting. A that is, chewy. Yep, that's an interesting. I never got to try it. I did have uh, Eskimo ice cream one time. Yeah, that was the other one we had. It was one of those little things where we got together and had little samples of each and yeah. 
Yeah. They had the Eskimo ice cream, and that was uh, that was definitely interesting too. <laughs> Have you had the chance to try the sun cured uh, salmon? No, I haven't. So the the traditional way that the that the villagers in a lot of the places, uh, 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 Tanana is one of them, um, that they prepare salmon is when they catch them in the fish wheels and everything, they gut them, they they split them up the middle and pull the the spine and the bones out, but they don't go all the way through, so that they hang the the salmon over birch poles in the sun. And there's a, usually a fire near them, but it's not really smoking them. Basically, they just hang it out, and it sun dries. And it is a, it's safe to eat. It doesn't rot because the, there's almost no humidity there in the summer. It's dry. And it's kind of a, it's not salmon jerky. It's not smoked salmon, but it's not not salmon jerky or smoked salmon. It tastes different than what you would think it would be. Um, it's not bad, but it's definitely different. It's definitely salmon. Yeah. <laughs> One thing I've never tried and I never will try because I know how to make it, lutefisk. <laughs> I'll never try that. You could buy cans of it, and I'm like, nope, thanks, I'm good. <laughs> Anything you pack and lie and let rot in a can for years and call it food? <laughs> no, thanks. <laughs> or Greenland shark, that's one. They have to... Uh, they have to steep it in lye and then rinse it like 40 times in order because it's poisonous. The meat is actually poisonous, and the only way to process the poison out is to steep it in lye. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> there are some foods out there that are pretty strange. <laughs> pretty strange. Well, dog and cat over in the Asians, I think. Yeah. Uh, have you ever tried that? Never had to. Never, well, I might have. I uh, yeah, I was just saying, I've eaten from little food carts and back alleys in Thailand. I don't know. You don't ask. Yeah, you don't ask what the meat is. You just they had fried bugs over there and yeah. for the tourists. And I'm like, yeah, no, thanks. Well, yeah. I've had Cajun fried grasshoppers. Those weren't bad. Yeah, yeah. a little crispy. Yeah, nice well. little. I have had. Um, if you ever driving through Louisiana, stop at one of these fish belt fish ball stands and get fish balls. There's no way to describe them except they're incredibly good. <laughs> it's it's a meatball made out of fish, and it's really good. <laughs> Cajun fish balls, those are and and cracklins, of course. You got to get fresh cracklins if you're going through Louisiana. Well, my niece just got a, landed a residency in Louisiana, so uh, maybe I'll get some good recipes from her once she's yeah. settled. <clears throat> and boiled peanuts. Go to Georgia and get you some boiled peanuts. That's a favorite snack of mine. I like boiled peanuts. I don't even care if people are like, ah, oh, gosh, boiled peanuts are good. I, I know it's a big thing when they have a, uh, we have a local farmer's market here in town. And there's someone there that's always, uh, he's a former pro wrestler. I don't remember his name, but he's always there boiling peanuts and, I was like, yeah, okay, I'll try a bag. And uh, I think they molded before I ate them all. Really? I could, I love bull peanuts. I'll eat, I'll eat a lot of them. Seriously, I will eat a lot of bull peanuts. I'll sit down and be like, oh, I can't move. I've eaten too much. I love me some bull peanuts. You got to say it right, too. It's not boiled peanuts. It's bull peanuts. Pearl peanuts. <laughs> I got to burl some peanuts. <laughs> well, here in the South, we do we, we do things a little different. I remember when I was stationed at Mayport, Florida, there was a guy, like a, a little trailer, little shack, pulled off the side of the road, and he opened three days a week, and he it was smoked. It was barbecue. It was real smoked barbecue. And uh, he sold this thing he called uh, kitchen sink salad. And it was like a pound of salad, at least, of just lettuce. And then about two pounds of every kind of meat that he smoked thrown in the salad. Let me tell you something. For 13 bucks, you'd get like three pounds of this salad, take it home, divvy it up in a family of four, and everybody would be stuffed and just full. And it was one of the most delicious things I've ever eaten. Some of the best barbecue I've ever had. 
That's one thing that's, we miss up here in Alaska, some good old barbecue. Good smoking, good barbecue. Yep. Yeah. Seems like every time a place opens up, it by the time you get over to it, it's closed down again. Well, yeah, I mean, because every time something new opens up here in Alaska, I mean, it's there's a fucking mad-ass rush for everybody and their brother to go into that place. So, yeah, you usually wait and let it die down for a little bit, and by that time, yeah, something happens. Mm. Well, it just depends on the economy and what's going on and who's it. I mean, and, the bases there, you'd think Anchorage and Fairbanks would, would be able to support a little more diversity and, it, you know, things like that. But um, Yeah. Heaven forbid you get the first Sonic, too, because, oh, my God, there was a two-hour wait for about a month. You know, uh, when I was stationed in Florida, they opened a Sonic – on Mayport road. And my buddy from Alabama was like, Oh, you have to try Sonic. It's the best thing ever. You've got to try Sonic. And so the week, the week they opened, we went and we got burgers and we both got food poisoning. It took me years to go. Back to <laughs> it took me years to go back into a Sonic, you know? Well, if you're ever in Anchorage, you'll actually, you can't go wrong with the Moose's tooth pizza. So there oh, you go. Yeah. Or, <laughs> or the Arctic road runner for that matter. Yep. The Arctic Roadrunner has been around. Man, every time I get back to Anchorage, the first place I go is Arctic Roadrunner for a Kodiak burger. Well, the original one shut down now, but the other is one it? down on uh, Ship Creek or uh, oh, Campbell Creek. Campbell Creek is still yeah. open. Well, that's good. Yeah, the original one was downtown. Yeah, they're on Arctic. Yeah. <laughs> that's how it got its name. Yeah. Arctic and Fireweed. Yep, 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 yep. But it's, it's, it got shut down a couple years ago after the owner passed away, but they've kept the other store open. Well, that's good. That's a shame. That was, well, it's a it's a tourist trap. Well, it's one of the best burger places I've ever. I mean, that used to be back in the eighties. That was where the locals went for burgers. You let the tourists go to to McDonald's. We're going to Arctic Roadrunner. Oh heck yeah! That was the best, definitely. Well, it looks like we're about out of time. Anybody got any last thoughts? Well, I'll jump in first. What the heck? Check on your brothers during this. Everything that's going on, brothers, sisters, all that. And- if you can't go see them, at least give them a call, Skype, Zoom meeting, whatever. Make sure they're all doing okay. And uh, on the lighter side, you know, back in my day, we had uh, so much toilet paper, we'd string it on the trees of our enemies. <laughs> Blank? Nah, just to, to, to piggyback off of what Frosty said, you know, this time is crazy right now. Um, you know, besides checking in with family and seeing how they're doing, definitely check on your brothers and sisters because uh, even though that social distancing is sometimes what we crave and what we want, uh, a little too much social dis- distancing can be a, a bad thing as well. So uh, just check them out and, and, you know, make sure they're doing all right. And if you can, yeah, by all means, FaceTime. Uh, get online, do a little online gaming with them. Just, just, just something to keep their minds and, and stuff active uh, and off of what the craziness and shit that's going on right now, guys. Yeah, definitely. Fester? Well, everyone just try to enjoy your time with your family. Don't panic. This, will t- this too will pass within time. Just try to keep a level head. I know that's almost impossible these days, but keep a level head don't do things that are going to be on Facebook or a blooper reel anywhere. Or, or live PD. Or live PD. <laughs> <laughs> and be good to each other for a change. Mm-hmm. I'm just going to leave people with this. If you don't already have some stockpile of materials, it's too late. Uh, but you really need to think long and hard about making sure you have emergency supplies uh, for the next time something like this comes around. And that includes knowledgeable use of firearms. If you own guns and know how to use them, keep owning guns and keep knowing how to use them. If you don't own guns and need to learn how to use them, find a veteran. We'll teach you. Or if we don't know, we know somebody who does. But one of the things that we need to be very careful about when things like this happen is social unrest. And there is a reason why the Second Amendment was written. The first part of it is to defend ourselves from overreaches of the government. But the second part of the reason that the Second Amendment was written was because it is, because it is your right to defend yourself should something go awry in society and people 
uh, resort to kicking indoors to try to find supplies. Be smart, be safe, keep your booger hook, hook off of the bank switch, and uh, we'll get through this, folks. We love you. See you next week. Y'all be safe. Stay out of trouble. Yeah. See ya. Bye-bye. Radio.